Hello everyone, and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. If you're enjoying our legal education content, please remember to subscribe, it helps the channel grow. For today's case, we're talking about the flying spaghetti monster and pastafarianism, and trying to decide whether or not it's a religion or not. Very exciting. This brings us to the case of Kavanaugh versus Bartlett. In this case, a person in jail said that they were a pastafarian, and they said that they believed in the flying spaghetti monster. And they said that the prison was not accommodating their religious requests. So the court here has to figure out um, what is the nature of pastafarianism? What is the nature of its beliefs? What should the prison do about it? Well, let's get started with this. The plaintiff, Stephen Kavanaugh, is a prisoner in Nebraska State Penitentiary. Kavanaugh says that he is a pastafarian. That is, a believer in the divine flying spaghetti monster who practices the religion of FSM-ism. He's suing the defendants who are prison officials because of refusal to accommodate his religious requests. The defendants move to dismiss. Kavanaugh's complaint actually contains very little detail on FSM-ism or its purported requirements, perhaps because they're so deliberately absurd or if its own provisions would undermine his argument. So before addressing Kavanaugh's specific allegations, it will be more helpful to address FSM in detail. So the court notes that Kavanaugh over here said, I'm being oppressed, but didn't actually note like any of the teachings of the religion or how they're being oppressed. So the court now has to explain Pastafarianism to itself. Fun. Flying Spaghetti Monsterism is a repose to intelligent design that began with a letter to the Kansas State Board of Education when it was considering intelligent design. The primary criticism of intelligent design and the basis for excluding it from science is although it purports to be scientific, it's actually a theological argument, not science. The conceit of flying spaghetti monsterism is that because intelligent design does not identify the designer, its master intellect could just as easily be the flying spaghetti monster as any Judeo-Christian deity, and in fact, there's as much scientific evidence for flying spaghetti monster as any other creator. As the flying spaghetti monster gospel explains, we are entering into an exciting time where no longer will science be limited to natural explanations. Propelled by popular opinion and local government, science is quickly becoming receptive to all logical theories, natural and supernatural alike. The FSM Gospel goes on to say, Consider the theory of evolution. To their credit, intelligent design advocates have successfully argued that their alternative theory deserves as much attention as evolution since neither can be considered fact. This is a valid point, but evolution is hardly the only theory in trouble. Take gravity, for example, the force of attraction between mass particles. So let's consider gravity and the fact that we don't know much about gravity. So what might be alternate explanations for gravity since, you know, the scientific community is a little bit puzzled about the nature of gravity? What might some alternatives be? Let, let's discuss that. What if it is he pushing down on us with his noodly appendages that causes this force? He's invisible, remember, and undetectable by current instruments. So in theory, it's possible. And the fact that gravitational powers of the spaghetti monster have been disproved makes it all the more likely to be true. We can only guess as to his motives, but it's logical to assume that if he's seeking to go to such trouble, there's good reason. It could be that he doesn't want us floating off the earth into space, or maybe that he enjoys touching us, we'll never know. And while it's true that we don't have any empirical evidence to back this up in this theory, keep in mind the present step by intelligent design. Not only is it observable, repeatable evidence not required to get an alternative theory included in the curriculum, so it's simply poking holes in established theory may be enough. So yeah, the, the flying spaghetti monster people over here have some criticism of intelligent design and think that flying spaghetti monsterism is as good an explanation for, you know, insert any god of your choice. Because, you know, there's just as much evidence, they say. And so, you know, maybe is the flying spaghetti monster pushing down on us with his noodly appendage, which from a pure scientific standpoint, maybe because, you know, yeah. But, you know, there's not really any great evidence for it, so maybe not so much in the classroom right now. Maybe later, when there's further evidence, we can talk about the Flying Spaghetti Monster, but maybe not so much right now. Flying Spaghetti Monsterism is then a comedic extrapolation of the philosophical argument known as Russell's Teapot. It rejects the idea that hypothesis can be proved by absence of evidence disproving it. But Flying Spaghetti Monster Gospel does not stop there. It sets forth, or at least follows, the form of a catechism of flying spaghetti monsterism. The blurb on the back of flying spaghetti monster gospel conveys a flavor. 
can I get ramen from the congregation? Behold, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, today's fastest growing carbohydrate best religion. According to the church founder, Bobby Henderson, the universe and all life within it were created by a mystical and divine being, the Flying Spaghetti Monster. What drives the Flying Spaghetti Monster's devout followers, aka Pastafarians? Some say it's the assuring touch from the Flying Spaghetti Monster's noodly appendage. Those who are in love, the worship service, which is conducted in pirate speak and attended by congregants in dashing Bacchanar garb. Still others are drawn to the church's flimsy moral standards, religious holidays every Friday, and the fact that Pastafarian heaven is way cooler. Does your heaven have a stripper factory and a beer volcano? Having described the basic tenets of Pastafarianism, which looks increasingly attractive, we must now turn to Kavanaugh's expression of this religion and how it relates to his current plight. So let's read about Kavanaugh and how he experiences the noodley appendage. Let's read on. Kavanaugh alleges that he is a Pastafarian, that he openly declares his belief many years ago and apparently has several tattoos describing his faith. Excellent. He began requesting that prison officials afford his faith the same rights and privileges as religious groups, including the ability to order and wear religious clothing and pendants, which, you know, buccaneer garb, apparently, the right to meet for weekly worship services and classes, and the right to receive communion. His requests were rejected because prison officials determined that FSMism is a parody. Dun, dun, dun. He sued several prison officials in their official and individual capacities pursuant to 1983 seeking injunctive and monetary damages. A hero to the cause, man. 1983. Let's, let's give that a shot. Kavanaugh's complaint invokes the religious freedom provisions of the First Amendment are an, on the Nebraska Constitution, as well as the equal protection of the, of the uh, Nebraska Constitution. The relevant law provides that a program that receives federal financial assistance, no government shall impose a substantial burden on religious exercise of a person residing in or confined to an institution even if the burden results from a rule of general applicability, unless the government demonstrates that the imposition of the burden on the person is furtherance of a compelling governmental interest as the least restrictive means. So, yeah, even if it's generally applicable, which normally we would think intermediate scrutiny, federal law has bumped it up by statute to strict scrutiny. So can we pass strict scrutiny? Let's find out. Courts may not presume to determine the plausibility of a religious claim. So, yeah, we can't determine if it's plausible. So no. Prison officials may, however, appropriately question whether a prisoner's religio religiosity asserted as the basis for a, a accommodation is authentic. So we can't determine if they actually believe it, but we can determine whether or not it's authentic or whether or not they're just making it up. All right. So do they really believe this? Because we can't determine whether or not the belief is true. All right. Let's try to make this clearer. We can't determine whether the belief is true. If they believe it, it's true. But we can't determine whether they believe it. So yeah. Accordingly, the relevant law bars inquiry into whether a particular belief or practice is central to a religion. It does not pre preclude inquiry into the sincerity of the belief. Yeah. The truth of a belief is not open to question. Rather, whether or not it's objectively believed. So yeah, we can't... The government cannot ask questions like, is this belief true? Is this tenet of eating spaghetti and meatballs central to the religion? Can't do that. What we can do is ask, do you actually believe it? Or maybe you're pulling one over on us. Maybe you don't really believe it. Maybe this really isn't your religion. Yeah. Courts have taken different approaches to these inquiries. However, the court can start with these indicia. First, a religion addresses fundamental and ultimate questions having to do with deep and imponderable matters. Second, a religion is comprehensive in nature. It consists of a belief system as opposed to an isolated teaching. Third, religion can often be recognized by the presence of certain formal and external signs. So we have some clues of what religion might look like based on our long human experience of religions. This case is difficult because flying spaghetti monsterism as a parody is designed to look very much like a religion. Candidly, propositions from existing case law are not particularly well suited for such a situation because they are developed to address more ad hoc creeds, not comprehensive, but plainly satirical talk. So in these other churches, like the, the court cited, like the church of marijuana, it's like, no, you know, that's just like, it's just an ad hoc thing. We like marijuana. No. So, but this is more comprehensive. So eh. nonetheless, however, the court's not going to be that stupid. It's evident to the court that flying spaghetti monster is not a belief system addressing deep and imponderable matters. 
Ah, uh, uh, we're all disappointed. Apparently, yeah, flying spaghetti monster is not, in fact, a belief system addressing the deepest and most imponderable matters. Very sad. It is ex explained above a satirical rejoinder to a certain strain of religious argument. Nor, however, does flying spaghetti monsterism advocate for humanism or atheism, which court acknowledges have been found to be religious for these purposes. So, yeah, no, I mean, no, we 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 can determine this is a this is a parody. We're we're not that dumb. And we don't think that you really believe in this. So, no. It is not clear from Kavanaugh's complaint whether his professed adherence to flying spaghetti monsterism is grounded in argument or a literal reading of the flying spaghetti monster gospel. But to read the flying spaghetti monster gospel literally would be to misrepresent and indeed to do a disservice to it in the process. That would present the flying spaghetti monster gospel as precisely the sort of fundamentalist dogma that was meant to rebut. You know, not not that I necessarily want to criticize the court too hard here, but, you know, lest I put too fine a point on it, lest I put too fine a point on it, as we've learned in our Capital Riot series, an ongoing and never-ending series, I might add, the capacity of people to believe some really batshit crazy things is pretty expansive. So... Does he really believe in flying spaghetti monster? I mean, someone probably does. Someone really probably believes in it because, you know, capital riots. So, yeah. I, I wonder what QAnon's position is on flying spaghetti monsterism. Does QAnon have an official religion? If not, are they adopting one? It bears emphasizing that the court is not engaged in and has been careful to avoid questioning the validity of the beliefs. The court is well aware that it should not undertake to dissect religious beliefs because the believer admits that he's struggling with his position or because his beliefs are not articulated with clarity and precision that a more sophisticated person might employ. What does a more sophisticated person in flying spaghetti monsterism look like? One begs the question. And then the court has this wonderful line, which I love so very, very much, that this is not a question of theology. It's a matter of basic reading comprehension. I mean, just chef kiss, right? This is not a question of believing in something. It's a question of your ability to read. The flying spaghetti monster gospel is plainly a work of satire meant to entertain while making a pointed political statement. To really read it as religious doctrine would be little different from grounding a religious exercise on any other work of fiction. A prisoner could just as easily read the works of Van Gogh or Helene and claim it as his holy book and demand accommodation of brokenism or the church of all worlds. Uh, no. Because flying spaghetti monster is not a religion, for the relevant law purposes, Kavanaugh has failed to, claim, failed to claim a religious burden. Yes, no, no. A prisoner also bears the burden under the relevant law of establishing that a government practice puts a substantial burden on the exercise of religious practice. What might that look like in the present case? Let's read more. The primary focus of Kavanaugh's complaint, however, is that he's being discriminated against. That flying spaghetti monsterism is not being treated the same as other faiths. He says very little about how his exercise of flying spaghetti monsterism has been significantly burdened by that discrimination. The closest he comes is alleging to the wearing of special religious clothing as particularly important in flying spaghetti monsterism because, according to Kavanaugh, the flying spaghetti monster gospel says the flying spaghetti monster becomes angry if we don't. Kavanaugh, however, does not identify the religious clothing, which presumably is a pirate costume. The passage relied upon by Kavanaugh ordinarily comes from Bobby Henderson's initial letter to the Kansas Board of Education found between a claim that scientific measurements are skewed by a flying spaghetti monster's change in the results with his noodly appendage and correlative data suggesting global warming is caused by a decreasing number of pirates in the high seas, which is much, such a wonderful graph. I love that graph very, very much. Global warming is caused by a decreasing number of pirates. I mean, they are well correlated. Global warming has increased as pirates have decreased. Yeah. The flying spaghetti monster gospel says, brothers, brothers, reach up your arms and preach the word. Preach the word of the flying spaghetti monster. Come before me and hear these charged words so that you may be redeemed. Oh, my brethren. Yes. What does the flying spaghetti monster have to teach you? I am sure you will now realize how important it is your students are taught this alternative theory. I am absolutely imperative they realize how the observable evidence is at the discretion of the flying spaghetti monster. 
Furthermore, it's disrespectful to teach our beliefs without wearing his chosen outfit, which is, of course, full pirate regalia. I cannot stress the importance of this enough, and unfortunately cannot describe in detail why this must be done, as I fear this letter is already becoming too long. The concise explanation is that he becomes angry if we don't. Praise be, praise be. So this begins as an attempt to vex the Kansas Board of Education by demanding not only that students be taught about the flying spaghetti monster, but that teachers dress as parents to do so. In other words, it is a joke at the expense of proponents of intelligent design. As to his claims under the First Amendment, when an inmate has not met his burden under the relevant statute to demonstrate a substantial burden, his claims necessarily fail under a fair exercise. Yeah, because in a case of neutral applicability, it would be a lower standard. So if it doesn't meet the higher standard, it necessarily doesn't meet the lower one. Kavanaugh's complaint reflects only his affirmative request that prison accommodates his religious beliefs. He does not allege that he's altered his behavior or has had direct, offensive, and alienating conduct as a result of any accommodation given to another professed religion. In order to establish an equal protection claim, a prisoner must show he's treated differently from similarly situated inmates and the differential treatment is based entirely upon a suspect classification or a fundamental right. Based on the discussion of flying spedigani monsterism alone, the court finds that Kavanaugh is not similarly situated to other inmates who profess a religious faith, and the allegations set forth in the Kavanaugh complaint do not suggest invidious discrimination, rather they establish that prison officials considered Kavanaugh's request in good faith and concluded reasonably that flying spaghetti monsterism was satirical and required no special accommodation. Thus, that brings us to the end of the case of Kavanaugh versus Bartlett. In this case, Mr. Kavanaugh thinks that he is an adherent of the flying spaghetti monster, and he likes religious accommodation, which he doesn't quite specify exactly what that is, incidentally. So there's that. Um, he doesn't quite say how he's being burdened. He doesn't quite say what he wants. He doesn't even quite say what the teachings are. So the court, perhaps, unfortunately, has to begin a fairly laborious attack, or a fairly laborious effort of trying to decide what flying spaghetti monsterism is. And we learn that it involves eating spaghetti and meatball, which I think we can approve of, and also involves, um, you know, wearing pirate regalia. And apparently, their heaven involves beer volcanoes and stripper factories. So that's a plus. But the, the, the court concludes that maybe it's not a real belief. Maybe it's a parody. Maybe not so much. So, you know, there's no burn here on him. He's not being denied his belief. He can believe anything he wants. And, you know, I guess whenever the, you know, prison cafeteria offers his spaghetti meatballs, he can make a special blessing to the spaghetti monster, maybe. But at least for the moment, that brings us to the end of the discussion of this case.